Welcome back to our review of Abe and the Amazing Promise. This is part two, so if you haven't seen part one, check that out. So far, we've been told the very abbreviated story of Abraham, and let me really put emphasis on the abbreviated because, uh, yeah, they left out all the good parts. And we had a great silly song called The Sneeze Doctor. Fantastic, honestly, a classic. What's up in the next episode? I don't know, but let's find out. Blunders and Boo Booville. What in the heyday is this? Where's the glue, Maurice? <laughs> Your glue, Jacques. What took you? <gasps> Maurice, this stuff needs hours to dry. Oh, brother. As it turns out in this story, Larry is a brilliant inventor. <laughs> yeah, right. Who is also wildly impatient. Now that I do believe. He would rather use cardboard than plywood and gum instead of glue. Larry wants to show off his latest invention to his peers, but he has forgotten that he promised Bob to do the Bagat relay race with him, which just so happens to take place at the same time. I mean, like, what are the odds? Did you make the sandwiches? They're over on the workbench. Uh, there's only one. Did you forget mine? And there's no peanut butter, just bread. Yeah, I was in a rush, so I skipped that part. How can you skip that part? That means all you did was take bread out of the bag and put it on a plate and call it lunch. Call it a sandwich. It is not a sandwich, good sir. It is not a sandwich. That isn't how this works. Solo, we'll figure it out. We'll use the force. That's not how the force works. <laughs> Bob then tells Larry that he needs to use some patience. Larry has had some great idea that he got working, but each one of his ideas that he got working had a major flaw that resulted because he was massively impatient and could have been solved had he just taken his time and done it correctly. Gotta hurry, gotta worry, gotta step on it and scurry. You just skipped a step and short a cut. I get to town by noon. Gotta make it fast and cheap. Gotta take a turn and shoot. Gotta make it cheap and gotta make it fast. That's exactly how most corporations think, don't they? Yeah. That really sucks. Man, this got real serious real fast. Boy, that escalated quickly. I mean, that really got out of hand fast. You can't stack eggs. I can. You can't. I can because that's where. Well, get ready to scream, oh no, at my fancy telephono. Oh, you're calling. Well, I built just one, so no one else is there. Is it just me or is anyone else wondering why this part of the Abe and the Amazing Promise episode wasn't in the front half and put Abe and the Amazing Promise in the back half? Because usually it's how it works. Usually VeggieTales puts like, the filler or the random, you know, part of the episode that has nothing to do with what's actually on the box in the front of the episode, and then they put the star attraction in the back. But in this case, they put the star attraction in the front and the filler in the back. It's a little bit confusing. I don't know why they did it. Uh, not ready. We're still working out the kinks in this one. <laughs> Bonus points to whomever can tell me what they're trying to invent, because I have no idea. Ooh. Oh, impressive. That thing looks disgusting with all the chewed gum on it. But where will you find a volunteer foolish enough to try it? Of course it is, Bob. You know, despite him being a generally more logical vegetable than Larry, he is still dumb enough to be talked into things like flying on a plane that is held together by gum. As expected, Bob is scared out of his mind, and I mean, who wouldn't be, while Larry controls the plane remotely, the plane that's held together by gum. For some reason, Bob has the instruction book on how to fly the plane on him, and Larry doesn't have it, and that can't be good, and just happens to drop it right as he is flying over the supposedly abandoned mad scientist house. Oh, I'm sure we're never gonna go there in this episode. Abandon my butt. I've seen enough VeggieTales to know exactly where this plot point is going. Larry crashes the plane, I mean, who didn't see that coming? And Bob retires from working with Larry as he has shown very little regard for doing things correctly and for his friendship with Bob. But you can't quit, you're my friend. I can't afford to be friends anymore. Your impatience is hazardous to my health. Cause I'm a hazard to my I actually never plan on using that song in any of my episodes, and yet here it is. I apologize. Mayor slash Madam Blueberry announces that the Boo Boo Bird Festival is coming up soon, but no one has seen the species of the bird in quite some time, and due to the fact she has to cancel the festival, gasp, maybe now they can throw a different festival. I mean, it's just a suggestion. Unless someone, an inventor perhaps, can find a way to make the boo-boo reappear. <sighs> this is becoming so predictable. Please mix it up, VeggieTales. An inventor? That's me! Ivy Lip 
appoint him the Minister of Inventions. And he will get to wear this fabulous hat. That's what I'm talking about. Plot twist. I am so going to win that fabulous hat. Yeah, I'm going to rock it all day. As it turns out, Larry needs the book that Bob dropped. I mean, what are the odds? It also landed right next to the doorstep of the supposedly abandoned mad scientist house. We quickly find out that it is not as abandoned as we had been told. And of course, the mad scientist is a nice guy who is not all that mad. Who saw that coming? We do see that he is a great inventor. Nonetheless, Larry could learn a thing or two from this guy. And after all these years, I finally made that discovery. Ice tea? What is it? That's it. What, the sunflower seed? Yes. That's not a discovery. It's a snack. Facts. Larry is spewing nothing but facts. The mad scientist shows Larry the Bible and with it a verse about how being hasty is a hazard to yourself. Seriously, again. Twice in this video. That's that's two times more than I ever plan on showing it. Larry takes the sunflower seed and goes home with it, planted in a pot. He then tries to speed up its growth and gets impatient within 20 seconds of planting it. I'm not even kidding, but he really needs to chill out. Anyways, Mr. Lunt comes along and says that he knows how he can get a boo-boo bird to come to town. By building a giant girl boo-boo. Ha! It's gonna be 50 feet tall. Wait a second, a tall but not at all real bird? Where have I heard this before? It was a really tall bird. Well, yeah, but it, it can't be... fly. It can't. No, it just moves its neck around. Oh, you mean like a hundred foot tall bird? With like, you the know, kind the of one, bird like a crane that... with the long the neck. The kind of bird that does not exist. I knew it. That episode was two years before this one, and they took that idea and made it into part of this episode. Brilliant work. I like it, VeggieTales. Continue with the craziness. Bob comes by the next day and sees Larry growing a seed, which has had some serious growth in a matter of only one day. As it turns out, Bob was only there to pick up his hammer. And the interaction between him and Larry feels a bit like they just broke up. It's really awkward. I mean, that would probably be the best word to describe it. Anyways, Larry then recalls a song his mom used to sing him about patience. Wow, talk about being really forgetful. How did he forget a song that his mom sang about patience and now his whole life he's impatient? Whatever. The Boo Trap! I'm with the crowd. That wouldn't fool anyone. Not even a bird. I thought to myself, what better way to attract a boo boo than with a boo boo? Ooh. Just wait till I start her up. That looks like garbage. Really hot garbage. Wait a second, is Larry about to attract a boo-boo bird with that stupid sunflower? Are you kidding me, VeggieTales? Are you, are you messing with me right now? I did it! I can't even right now, nor can I odd. All right, everyone, I think I have a plan, but I'm gonna need your help, a little bit of patience, and a whole lot of seed. What do you think happens next? A, the town rallies together and grows a bunch of sunflower seeds. B, a giant meteor crashes towards the earth and the only way to stop it is Larry crashing a rocket ship into said meteor while listening to Aerosmith's I don't want to miss a thing. C, it turns out Larry has been dead the whole time and the entire town is actually just a bunch of ghosts. Or D, all of the above. While D would be epic and absolutely crazy, sadly the answer is A. whoop de dee doo da let's move on. Let's see if QWERTY has a verse for us today. Does QWERTY ever not have a verse for us? I would really like to see that. Enthusiasm without knowledge is no good. Haste makes mistakes. Um, uh, about those cookies. Oh, yeah. Okay, he's ready. Ready for what? These were yummy cookies. Larry, you're that guy. There's always that guy in a group of friends and you're him. Remember, God made you special. And he loves you very much. Goodbye. Goodbye. I can make you some more. Can you wait? Okay, Larry, you redeemed yourself. That was Abe and the Amazing Promise. A very promising, good first 20 minutes that was capped by a great silly song. Ends with kind of a, a thud. It just, it, it was like this the whole time, you know, silly song, and then 
last 30 minutes. Stay tuned as next week we review the second and actually the last Minnesota Cuke episode, Minnesota Cuke and the Search for Noah's Umbrella, and it's on Blu-ray. Good work, VeggieTales. Hopefully it's based on Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade and not that other one. You know, the Temple of Doom. Some say Kingdom of the Crystal Skull is the worst one. Um, I would argue Temple of Doom. Remember, God made you special and he loves you very much. Bye.